Theatre is one of the only art forms which brings together everyone in 18th century London, from apprentices sitting at the top in the gallery, very squashed in, very dirty, very smelly, to the aristocrats sitting in the boxes. People were allowed to enter in the middle of plays. In fact, they had an incentive to do so because it cost them less if they came in just for the last act. Um, people would talk and heckle and discuss things and walk around during the plays. In the early 18th century, audiences were used to barracking exotic characters on stage, like those found in Italian operas. Then a play appeared that was a true piece of British theatre. This was The Beggar's Opera by John Gay. As the curtain went up on Gay's satirical masterpiece, audiences were in for a surprise. Here on stage were rude common people, just like those found in a Hogarth print. Well, the first character you see is a beggar. And because this has, been, this has been advertised as an opera, it must have been an extraordinary surprise to the audience to be sitting in the theatre at Lincoln's Inn Fields and to look up and to see a beggar on stage. This was an event that no one had seen before. It was something quite new. The Beggar's Opera is rude because it's set in a prison, its heroes aren't kings and queens, its heroes are kind of thieves and highwaymen and pickpockets. The Beggar's Opera became a smash hit precisely because it was rude theatre. Rude because in a space used to high art, audiences now saw low common characters on stage. And rude because they were singing songs that were biting satires on 18th century life. When you sense you're the age, be cautious and sage, lest the courtiers offended might be. If you mention vice or bribe, tis so pat to all the tribe, each cries, that was levelled at me. Gay had this brilliant idea which has been duplicated often since and is still duplicated, um, which is to put into his play lots of the most popular songs of the day. I mean, they do it in Shrek. He discovered this art first. So I think literally audiences sang along or hummed along because often he put rather new words to these tunes. These new lyrics attacked the double standards of Georgian life, where Gay saw one law for the rich, another for the poor. Since laws were made for every degree To curb vice in others as well as me I wonder we hadn't better company Upon Tyburn Tree But gold from law can take out the sting And if rich men like us were to swing T'would thin the land such numbers to string upon Tyburn Tree. This reference to Tyburn Tree would send a chill down the necks of Gay's audience. Tyburn, near modern-day Marble Arch, was the notorious place for public hangings in London. But the Beggar's Opera was much more than rude satire on the wider injustices of Georgian Britain. Audiences knew that the play was also an attack on specific politicians, their corruption and many scandals. It was generally recognised that the play lampooned the politicians of the day, that although it was an opera about thieves and highwaymen, these were really the thieves and highwaymen who were running the country and who were often actually sitting in the audience. Robert Walpole went to one of the first performances of the play. Walpole, the Prime Minister, was seen in all the key characters. Peachum, the thief-taker, Lockett, the jailer, and McHeath, the highwayman. What Gay does so brilliantly is to suggest to us that the world of politics is a world which, under the appearance of respectability, is in fact no more than pervasive corruption.
Also in the 1730s, from a theatre on the Haymarket, came further provocations to the Prime Minister and his cronies. Plays such as the Historical Register for the year 1736 were written by Henry Fielding. His attacks on political sleaze were even more direct than those of Gay in the Beggar's Opera. So faced with this, Walpole ordered that rude theatre now be dealt with. The government essentially decided to restrict the freedom that Fielding was enjoying and introduce licensing for, for, so that you had to submit your plays to a government censor before they were performed. Places such as the Haymarket no longer had a license to perform. Importantly, it put rude playwrights out of business. So it's a tremendously important moment in the history of theatre and it's a very successful shutting down of the rude in London. <laughs>